Do you wish that you could create one of these every time one of those is submitted? Well, if so, then you've come to the right place. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how you can create a Microsoft Planner task every time a Microsoft form response is submitted. Now I'll start off by showing you how to build a simple form in Microsoft Forms, and then I'll show you how to build a Microsoft Power Automate workflow to take the Microsoft form response details and pass those into your Planner task. Let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now the first thing that you need to do is navigate to Microsoft Forms. Now to do that, you can navigate to office.com and then you can click on the application launcher in the upper left-hand corner of your interface. And then you can click on the Microsoft Forms icon. Once you're in MS Forms, you wanna go ahead and click on the new form button. And then you wanna go ahead and build out your form. Now I'll start by giving this form a title. Now you can see here I've added a picture and my title. Next, I'll click into the description field and I will enter a description for this form. Now you can see here that I've pasted in my description. Next, I'm going to start by adding a date type question to this form. So I'll go ahead and select the date question here and then I'll enter my question text. And you can see here that I've pasted in my question text and that I've set this field to required. Next, I'll add a choice type question to this form. And again, I'll paste in my question and then I will also paste in the choice values. And you can see here that I've added in my second question and I've also set this question to be required. And I'll add one last question and that is a long text type question. All right, so you can see here that I've built out my form and that it contains three questions. Now it's important to note, you can add as many questions as you'd like to your form and you'll be able to pass in all of the responses to these questions into the planner task that we'll create through our workflow. All right, next you wanna to navigate to Microsoft Power Automate and then you want to click on create in the sidebar and then you want to select Automated Cloud Flow. Now, Automated Cloud Flows trigger when designated events take place. And in this case, our trigger will be when a new Microsoft Form response is submitted. Next, you want to give your flow a name. So I'll place my cursor in the flow name field and paste in a value. And then you want to select your flow's trigger. Now, the trigger that we are going to be using in this workflow is displayed at the very top of the trigger list. Now, if you don't see it at the top of your trigger list, then you can just start typing when a new response, and we are going to select this when a new response is submitted trigger. Next, you wanna go ahead and click create, and you can see here that the shell of our workflow has been created and that we have our trigger at the very top of the canvas. The next step is to go ahead and select the form that you would like to trigger this workflow. Now to do that, you wanna click on the dropdown in the pick a form field, and this will display a list of all of the Microsoft forms that you have created or that you have access to with Collaborate permissions. Now I'll go ahead and select my customer feedback survey. And then the next step is to add our workflow action. Now to do this, you wanna click on the new step button. Now I'll go ahead and search for the create a task action and you can see here that the actions list will display create a task. Now important note, you'll see here that there are two versions. One is in preview and one is not in preview. Now you can use either of these, but it's generally recommended that you don't use preview actions for production solutions. Now for that reason, I'll go ahead and select this one here. And you can see here that this has added the create a task workflow action to our canvas. Now the next step is to select the group that is associated with your plan. Now what that is referring to is the group that is associated with your Microsoft Planner plan. Now in this case, you can see here that I've brought Microsoft Teams up and you can see here that I have a team called customer service and I have a planner board that is called customer feedback. Now I want my tasks to be created in this plan. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the group ID dropdown. And this is going to display a list 
of groups that are associated with plans that you have access to in Microsoft Planner. Now you can see here this customer service group. This group is related or associated with that team that I just showed you in Microsoft Teams. So I will go ahead and select it. And you can see here that it has been added to the workflow action. Now there is an alternative way for you to quickly identify the team that your planner board is hosted in. And that is by using the group ID for that team. Now I do have a tutorial that demonstrates how to find the group ID of a team in MS Teams. I've included a link to that tutorial in the description below or you can just go ahead and click that card in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Next, you want to select the specific Microsoft Planner plan that you would like this task to be added to. To do that, you wanna click on the drop down arrow in the plan ID field. And this is going to display a list of plans that have been created in that team or that have been created as part of the group that we selected in the previous step. Now you can see here the customer feedback plan. I'll go ahead and select that value. Now the next step is to add the value that should be populated on the task title field. Now I will go ahead and place my cursor in the title field. And what you're going to notice is that this also brings up the dynamic content pane, which allows us to access information about the Microsoft form response that triggered this workflow. Now what you'll notice is there's only one piece of dynamic content listed here, and that is the response ID, which is the unique identifier assigned to Microsoft form responses. Now this isn't really going to be meaningful for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an additional step to our workflow and I will place my cursor in between the trigger and the create a task action. And I will click on the insert a new step button. And this time I will click on add an action. We are going to search for get form. And you can see here this action that says get response details. So we're gonna go ahead and select this. And what this action is going to do is it is going to allow us to actually obtain information from the form response that triggered this workflow. Now you wanna start by placing your cursor in the form ID field. And we are going to select the form that we're using to trigger this workflow. So that is the customer feedback survey. And then we need to select the response ID and I will place my cursor in this field and you'll see here the dynamic content pane has popped up again. And here we'll go ahead and select this response ID value. Now I'll go ahead and place my cursor back in the title field. And now you can see in the dynamic content pane that we have additional attributes that we can pipe in here. So you'll see that under the get response details, we can actually see the questions from the form that we built earlier in the tutorial. I will select the value here. What type of feedback would you like to submit? And that is going to pipe in this value in the title field. So whenever our task is created, it is going to take the response that was provided to that question and it is going to set it as the subject or the title of this particular task. Now I'll go ahead and save this. And you can see here that our flow has been saved and that it's ready to go. Now, if you're finding this video helpful, be sure to check out my other YouTube playlist, including how to use Microsoft Teams, how to use SharePoint Online, and how to use Microsoft Power Automate. I've included links to those playlists in the description below, and you can check them out on the homepage of my YouTube channel. Now the next step is to fill out the additional fields that you would like to populate on the task card. Now you can see here the fields that are displayed are the bucket IDs. So this is pertaining to the different lanes or buckets that you have on your planner board. You can set the start date and the due date. And you'll notice again, as you click into these fields, you can access dynamic content coming from the response that triggered the workflow. You can populate assigned to users if you would like to do that. And you can also set or apply labels by clicking into these label colors and setting them to yes. Now you can see here that these are all of the fields that are displayed and you might be asking yourself, well, where do I actually put in text that will populate in the description field of the planner task? Well, that is what we're going to look at next. All right, now next you want to click on new step 
And in the choose an operation box, you want to search for update task. And you can see here that there are two actions that match our query. And I'm going to select update task details. Now, this is the action that you would use to update the task description. Now, you'll notice that the first thing it is asking you for is the task ID. So I will place my cursor in this field. Then I'll select enter custom value. And I will select the ID attribute from the dynamic content page. And next, I'll place my cursor in the description of the task. And in the description field, you can have a combination of hard-coded text, and you can also pipe in information from previous steps in this workflow. Now, I will go ahead and hard-code some text in here first. Now, you can see here that I've hard-coded text. Now, what I'm going to do is place my cursor beside this text, and I am going to pipe in values from the Microsoft form that triggered this workflow. Now, you'll want to click into the dynamic content page, and you'll want to make sure you look for the action get response details, because this is the action that will display the fields from our Microsoft form. Now, the first attribute that I'll pipe in is the type of feedback, which is this question here, what type of feedback would you like to submit? And you can see here that it adds this card to the input box. Next, I'll go ahead and save this workflow. And you can see here that the flow has been saved. All right, now you can see here that I've filled out this customer feedback survey. And I will go ahead and click Submit. You can see here that the survey has been submitted. And you can see here that the task was created. Now I'll go ahead and click on the task card. You can see here the title is suggestion followed by the person who submitted the survey's email address. And in the notes field, you can see here that the response values from the MS form that triggered this workflow were piped in. Now I will demonstrate how you can modify your workflow to create planner tasks in different boards, depending on the responses that were submitted in your MS form. All right, now in order to create tasks in different boards, depending on the values that were submitted in your form, what you'll need to do is add a new workflow action immediately after the get response details. So you wanna go ahead and click on the insert a new step, and then you wanna click add an action. And here we are going to search for a switch. Next, you wanna go ahead and select the switch control. Now, a switch control in Power Automate allows you to execute one of multiple workflow actions depending on whether or not a condition was satisfied. Now, in our example, we're going to build out two different workflow paths. One will execute if the respondent selected suggestion in the MS form, and the other will execute if the respondent selected complaint. Next, you'll want to populate the on field. Now I'll place my cursor in the choose a value field. And in this example, I am going to switch on the what type of feedback would you like to submit field from my survey. Next, we're going to build out our case blocks. Now, essentially what these case blocks do is they will execute all of the workflow actions that we will add in this case block only if the value entered in that what type of feedback would you like to submit matches what we place in this equals field. The next thing that we'll need to do is add these two workflow actions that we had created earlier in the tutorial in this case block. Now, unfortunately, you cannot just drag these actions inside this case block. That would be pretty handy. You'll actually have to go ahead and recreate them. Now you can see here I've selected my group ID and I've also composed the title for the task. Now really important, in the plan ID field, this is where you'll want to go ahead and select the specific board that you would like this task to be created in. Now again, this case block is going to execute when someone selects complaints in our form. And so I will go ahead and select the complaints board now, the next step is to add an additional case block. And to do that, you want to click on this plus sign here that says add a case. And you can see here that this is going to add another case block. And this time in the equals field, 
I am going to type in suggestion. So you can see here I've added suggestion. Now you can see here that I've added those two workflow actions to this case block. And very quickly, I'll click on the create a task action. And you can see here for the plan ID, I selected suggestions this time. And again, that is to ensure that whenever a form is submitted with a suggestion, that that task gets added to the suggestions planner board. Next, we'll go ahead and test this. Now you can see here that I'm about to submit a survey and that I've selected complaint in this what type of feedback would you like to submit question. And you can also see that I am on the complaints planner board in my customer service team. Now I'll go ahead and click submit. And you can see here that the task was created. Now I'll go ahead and click on this card. You can see here that it piped in the task title and that it also piped in the information in the notes field of the task. All right, now you can see here that I am about to submit another form and this time I've selected suggestion. And you can also see that I've switched over to the suggestions planner board in Teams. Now I'll go ahead and click submit. And you can see here that the task was added to the suggestion board. So that's it. In this tutorial, I demonstrated how you can create a workflow in Power Automate that will automatically create a new planner task every time a response is submitted to a Microsoft form. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Akabalas. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.